Oh, okay. All right. So, um, hands-on SQL injection. I just have a few slides to explain why this is important in case anybody doesn't believe it, and then you can do it. Um, so, uh, this is me. I teach right here at City College. Um, and so, one thing you might wonder is how important there's all these vulnerabilities out there, but how important is SQL injection? Um, there are reasons to believe it is incredibly important. Now, here's one. Uh, this is from 2012. Uh, LulzSec and, and Team Ghost Shell have been using it a lot. This is one 82% of all lost data was sold in the SQL injection. This is because you can have a lot of other vulnerabilities like buffer overflows that let you take over a server, but SQL injection easily lets you steal all the data out of the database without taking over the server. And it's very easy, and it's very easy to do with free attack tools. It's so easy, it'll make you sick. Um, 97% of all data breaches are still due to SQL injection in 2012. Um, the leading method of malware distribution since 2008, because you use SQL injection to compromise a server and you add extra code to the server. So then people get infected when they view that web page. This is the number one way people get infected now, not by going to not click out email attachments or by surfing porn websites, but by going to news websites about current news topics because the bad guys connect scrapers to the Google trends. They take whatever the top 10 searches are and they put those words on their site to draw those searches and then put malware drive-by downloads on the site. So it's really hard. The users can't protect themselves by avoiding so-called high-risk activities. Doing the most common thing you want to do, looking for whatever the breaking news is, is the most dangerous thing to do. So anyway, if you have any kind of website, you really have an obligation not to permit yourself to have SQL injection vulnerabilities. But a lot of websites do, like 16% in this study. A lot of websites remain vulnerable to SQL injection. And Joshua Corman, I think, summarized it very well. There's the OWASP top 10 website vulnerabilities, but it really is stupid. SQL injection should be the top one, and you should forget about everything else. And this was the theme of the Rapid7 conference I went to. They talked about how you run a security scanner, it tries 10,000 vulnerabilities, and you run around patching them. But in fact, almost all the crime uses just 10 vulnerabilities, and most of them have been patched for years. If you just put on your updates, and really make sure they were on, that would be worth a lot more than patching all these obscure vulnerabilities that nobody's attacking anyway. So if you want to know if you're vulnerable, um, you'll see it in the website. If you have some kind of parameter and you put an apostrophe at the end of the URL, it's the simplest test. <coughs> of course, a proper vulnerability scanner is better. But this is the most common and most simple kind of SQL injection, where the SQL code just uses apostrophes as a separator. And when you put an apostrophe there, it creates a SQL syntax error. This means that it retained the apostrophe and interpreted it as part of the command line so I can follow it by active code. So I can put active code in a place where I was only supposed to put in passive data. And that is the fundamental error. And there's a lot of these guys that got hacked into this way. Here's the error you get at the CIA services. Not the CIA in Washington, but here's a bond exchange of the same thing, a bunch of MySQL problems. Um, and uh, if you have those, you can hack into the Linux tool, SQL map. And as you can see, this is pretty easy, but this is still a little bit difficult. We're not going to do that. That's too much work. We're going to do what Anonymous did to hack into PBS, which is use hub each. Um, and by the way, people use, find these all the time. I went and there's one just a couple days ago um, on pasted with 5,000 more SQL. So this one here was pretty good. I think it's had about 80. They were all really vulnerable. You can just go and find them right there, copy in the URL, see the vulnerability. And you can use this tool and hack right in and earn yourself 20 years in prison in five minutes. <laughs> um, so we're going to do it without going to prison by running a Linux machine that uh, runs this thing called SQLOL, which is a product put out by um, a Trust SpiderWave, I think. They made this to, as a training tool. Now this product is cool, but it was too complicated, so I made a much simpler version of it for us to play with. And but if, if you want to use these in your classes, I have a series of five projects that my students all do, which I highly recommend where you set up SQL injection and you do some of the SQLOL projects. They will teach you 20 different complicated kinds of SQL injection with projects. I just do the first three. There are all sorts of advanced tricks you can use to hack into more complicated servers and such. Um, then you use Havij, which is what we're going to do here, which is very easy, a Windows-based tool that just takes, over the, takes all the data out. And you can fix it. There are two ways to fix SQL injection vulnerabilities. The simplest one is one line of code. Input validation, you take out the apostrophes. Now that is not a very thorough patch. There are ways to get past it, but it'll stop Havid, it'll stop the low-level attackers. And uh, the last one is where you do it with parameterized queries. That takes about eight or ten lines of code. And that's better because then you use a proper data structure. Instead of having the fundamental problem here is you have a line of code 
But uh, let me just type it into a text box here and see if I have something like Notepad. All right. Um, you have a line of code that says something like select star from table users where name equals apostrophe name, which came from the user. You have a line of code that looks like that. And the fundamental logic flaw here, let me just make that bigger. Make sure everybody can see it. All right. This is a fundamentally stupid way to solve this problem because you have got a line of code which a human could have typed in, and it has active things like select and where and from, and it had passive things like that name that came from the user, and you just put them in the same line. So if I'm able to insert this magic control character called apostrophe in there, in the name, I hit control C, control D, there we are. That's just listen, listen to me. Listen to me this time. Control C, control D, there we are. If I'm able to put in a name here that's got an apostrophe in it, then I can make a tautology. The condition is now name equals X or A equals A. And what I did was feed in this stuff right here as a name. So by being able to, and see the, the logical flaw here is why is the data treated in such a way that makes it possible for the data to be misinterpreted as a command? There's no need for that. What you ought to use is a data structure. That's what a parameterized query does. And you'll put an object here with just an indicator, and the object will contain this data down here. It, the data should move down a different path so it cannot possibly be confused with the active code, and that's the better solution. Then you can store names with apostrophes in them and anything else. It doesn't matter. That's what you should use, but just taking out the apostrophes will make you much safer than not even doing that. So let me just demonstrate this one, and then you're going to do it. Um, in order to demonstrate it, I've got to move to my Mac, and that's why I think the recording uh, might as well stop it. It's not going to pick up what you do on the Mac, right? Yeah, why don't you stop it? That's as far as we can go. Um, oh, I'll show you where to get the project. You, know, uh, you go to, that's what I wrote on the board. You go to sansclass.info, and then scroll down to spring events, sans on SQL injection, and hit this link to open the project. And um, what you do here is each one of those machines has VMware player and it has Backtrack Linux on it already. So you launch this VMware player. In fact, I think I'll just talk about how to do it and go around and help people doing it. Um, then you get a Backtrack boot up screen here. Let's you log in. You log in with root and tour and give it start X, which gives you a graphical environment. And then you got an environment that looks like this. You hit that little black button up there, and that'll give you a command line terminal. This is what I've gotten used to doing in Linux. You open a graphical environment, and then control it from command line anyway. Um, and then you have just a few commands to execute. This starts your SQL server. You have to have a password, which we're just going to use this password. It's not secure, of course, but that's not the issue right now. Then you start Apache. And then you download SQL LOL, which I put on my website. I made a custom version of this tool that has some fun websites to play with. And in particular, it has this one page called Find Users. And the Find Users site lets you search for users, and there's a few things you can search here. But the fun thing is if you put in O'Neill, it will crash and give you a SQL error message because you can't use an apostrophe. And um, so that shows you how this thing works. O'Neill gives you a syntax error. So all you have to do is open that from your Windows machine, the host, and then attack it with the Havij attack tool, which I think is also on your desktop. And the Havij attack tool here, you just take the URL with the, and put it up there, and then click a couple buttons here, and it dumps out all the data. You don't even have to know what SQL injection is. You don't have to know what you're doing. This is why kids do it, and then they get long prison terms. That's why I put warnings all over the projects. You click a few buttons, and the data just appears right there. I grade some of it out because my students turned this in as proof that they did their homework. But you'll see how easy it is to just get social security numbers out of that database. And the fix is you go back to the SQL code. Here is the actual code that's used here. Select column name from table name or clause group by this and that. And you add this one line. Um, let me move it over because my screen is not catching the right stuff there. That's the one line. My SQL Q query equals my SQL real escape string of Q. It's just the default 
function included in SQL which will escape special characters, including apostrophes. And if you add that one line in, then if you go back and search for O'Neill, it searches for O backslash apostrophe Neil. It puts a backslash in front of all the special characters. And that prevents the apostrophe from being misinterpreted, and it stops Havij. This, a, a, a professional penetration tester could get past this defense, but it will stop the script kiddies. And um, the reason I did all this is because it is very well known that SQL injection is dangerous, but I could not find any simple step-by-step -step procedures how to protect yourself against it, which oh, irritated me, so I wrote them. So that people can actually leave, because what people do is they take a programming class, they go to a job, they do whatever got them in any programming, the boss says, you have good work, and you carry on, and they made another vulnerable website. So there ought to be some example they had in school where you can take it and do that, and at least they won't be as vulnerable anymore. So. Uh, see if you can get your backtrack started here. If you have any troubles, let me know. I work with the people next to you, especially in such a large group, that's good. And besides, most of the fun of these cons is the friends you make from sitting next to someone. And I'll just go around and help anybody who needs help. But I highly encourage you to give this to your students after you get it working.